Thank you for joining me. My name is Noah Mosley. I am with the MSX Group, and today I am presenting a session on Microsoft Forecaster 7.0 and how to update data. Now, if you're using Microsoft Forecaster for your budgeting application, as an administrator, you have a lot of options for changing data inside the budget. I've got a list here of the uh, possibilities on the left-hand side, everything from data import all through the different options for data input, including all the detail pages for input, as well as administrative options as, as the administ um, adjustments wizard, journal entries, transaction batches, allocations, and tasks. Now I'll switch to the application and take us through each one of these one at a time. Now the first option I mentioned on that PowerPoint slide was data import. Data import is located under tools up top, and then import, and you'll have options for data, human resources, details, and express link. If you're importing personnel data, you'll use uh, human resources. Uh, details allows you to import data for capital detail, or our line item detail, or revenue detail. Data and express link will both import account balances. Data will let you import from uh, text files. Express Link will let you import through a wizard directly from your GL system. The next option for changing balances inside Forecaster would be Data Input. Data Input is located up top under Data and then Input. I'll go ahead and open up one of the input sets that are available here in this demo database. Forecaster goes out, pulls back all the balances, and opens up the input screen for me. Now this is where most of your users will spend the majority of all their time. These balances may be, have been imported previously or have been in here already from a previous budget. And then your users are just going to come in here and make changes simply by typing over the balances uh, in the individual months. Or they're making changes to the annual totals. They might be making changes via line item detail. I've got an account for travel. I know that this account has some balances in February and March. I'm sorry, February and April. If I double click anywhere on that row, it opens up and shows me the line item details that have been added for that account. And also, several of these accounts, like Postage, have calculations tied to them, which was set up by the administrator. I can see Postage. In the bottom left, the formula equals FTE times $25. So FTE stands for full-time equivalence, which is calculated by our, our HR details. So the multi-row tab for data input is one of the most common means of, of changing data inside the budget in Forecaster. Now in addition to the multi-row input screen, which is account level input, you also have detail input screens. You have details for human resources, capital, revenue, and you also have a method of changing account level information um, on an individual account level called single row. Let me just show you human resources first. This is where you would have all your personnel data. Uh, this would have been imported from your personnel system into Forecaster. Any balances here or information here is used to calculate the balances for wages, taxes, and benefits, and that would be stored in your budget. Same deal for capital and revenue. Capital, you would budget for new assets. Anything we add to this screen would calculate cost for the assets and depreciation expense, and those balances would be stored back in the budget as well. Revenue, we're using this to break down how we calculate our sales and cost of goods sold and anything else that is uh, related to this type of accounting or, or budgeting. Again, any account balances that are calculated here are stored in the budget, the same budget uh, that is stored for HR, capital, and multi-row. Single row is a little bit different. Single row, you can only budget for one account at a time. I'll switch this to, say, the um, freight account. Um, you'll put in your input balances, and this screen is only one at a count at a time, but you do get to compare it to a baseline. Uh, which the baseline might be last year's actuals, it might be last year's budget, or any other comparison. And again, just like the other tabs, this is stored to the account in the same budget that HR, Capital Revenue, and Multi-Row gets stored against. 
So there's a quick overview of data input for changing balances inside Microsoft Forecaster. We looked at multi-row, we looked at single row, human resources, capital and revenue. And again, your end users will spend the majority of their time in these data input screens. Now as an administrator, you have other options as well. So I'm going to close out of my data input. I'll not save this. And as an administrator, you have several options. Um, two of these are under setup up top and then budgets. And under here we have an option for adjustments. Now the adjustment wizard will let the administrator adjust account balances either up and down by percentages or by dollar amounts. And they can make these adjustments for individual accounts and centers or multiple centers and accounts or for the whole company at one time. It's a very powerful tool. Um, you can affect a large amount of data at one time. On the same menu right below adjustments is allocations. Now an administrator might need to take an accounts balance and then spread that or distribute that balance to multiple other accounts or multiple other centers. So this is an allocation. You would define it here. Uh, you tell it where the money is stored and where the money is being distributed to. And you can distribute that money based on fixed percentages or a weighted average based on the value of some other account. Again, those two options are under setup, budgets, and you have adjustments and allocations. The next two options I want to mention would be journal entries and transaction batches. Those are located under data up top. You'll see an option for journal entry and transactions. These are very easy to change balances inside the budget. Uh, they do work uh, a little differently between each other. Journal entries will let you adjust balances. So you can adjust a balance up or down. Transaction batches, these will overwrite balances. Okay, so make sure you know what you want to do when you're using these two. Transactions overwrite, journal entries adjust. And the last thing I want to mention for an administrator who wants to change balances inside Forecaster or Task. Under Task, you have a lot of different options. Typically, a person will use this to recalculate input screen calculations for uh, certain centers or for the whole company at one time. Uh, you also have tasks that will recalculate HR, recalculate capital, revenue, uh, currency conversions. A lot of flexibility here, a lot of powerful uh, tasks that are involved. Um, also, if you, make a, if you define an allocation, you'll need a task to run that allocation. And tasks are kind of like macros in Excel. They run in the background, they do the calculations, post the balances. You never see it happen, it's all done in the background. Now we went through a lot of different options here in Microsoft Forecaster for changing balances inside Forecaster. Uh, if you have additional questions, please visit our website at msxgroup.com or you may email us at info at msxgroup.com. Uh, we have an account on Twitter, uh, so it's twitter.com slash msxgroup. Uh, we'd love to have you join us there. As well as on linkedin.com, we have a group for Microsoft Forecaster users. Um, and feel free to email me at noah.mosley at msxgroup.com. Thank you for joining me today. Have a great day.